What's making things better is when you have a real conversation with someone who has a difference in opinion from yours and hear each other out because that's where you actually change someone's mind. Hi. <laughs> Welcome to Inner Archaeology. I'm Emily. Yes. And I'm Sarah. And this is really a podcast kind of digging into why we believe what we believe because mm-hmm. it's our favorite thing to talk about. Mm-hmm. And also, it's the most important conversation that like I have had and continue to have with you that helps me kind of uncover things about myself and ultimately not letting my beliefs kind of like keep me stuck and trapped and small. And we should probably do this at the beginning of our podcast. Yeah, that was so good. (laughs) Sometimes, uh, like people have commented, they're like, I'm just now getting to know who's who. Uh, Did you see that? Yeah, I saw that comment. I was like, do we sound like, I mean... I don't think we sound similar, but but Maybe we we're not introducing ourselves, which I can see can be very confusing when you're like hearing just two voices go back and forth, right? right? Especially so. how we like blah, 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 on top of each other all the time. I'm sure it's confusing. <laughs> yeah. So yes, we're doing the thing. Yeah. So though. we're gonna we're gonna start doing that. Thanks, mm-hmm. guys, for the feedback. Yeah, <laughs> we appreciate, appreciate it. <laughs> but yeah, um, I kind of want to like re come back to roasting you. <laughs> So Sarah roasted the fuck out of me the other day and I was dying. I was dying laughing. We have this like ongoing like sh- thing that's been happening that I just think would be really funny to bring it on the yeah. podcast. <laughs> well, because yeah, I don't know. So I'll I, I do this thing where I'll end up down like a rabbit hole on the internet uh, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this thing is so crazy. And then I'll call Emily and tell her about it and she's like oh yeah I know and I'm like what the fuck (laughs) how do you know about this thing number one and you haven't told me and number two how is it not crazy to you like this is noteworthy okay so this time in particular was about oh my god my heart just kind of like exploded thinking about it because it's like my favorite thing yeah um I found I got an ad for glasses for people who are color colorblind and I was like what is this so I like clicked on it and it was an Instagram account for glasses for people who are colorblind and literally all of the videos are people who have been colorblind for like their entire life most of them are a little older um and they're like their family or whatever getting them these glasses and they're putting them on and seeing like the full spectrum of color for the first time and they're Mm -hmm. freaking out and it's like Mm -hmm. very emotional uh there was like this one guy he was like probably in his 60s and he was like this is so much more for you guys than it is for me and um but fine I'll do it and he was even joke he was like I'm like a UF pro former UFC fighter like this is not gonna make me emotional and they're like dad you don't have to get emotional it's fine and he like puts on the glasses and he literally is like <gasps> like just like gasping choking mm. like overcome with emotion and I'm just like crying and like <laughs> yeah. oh my God. And they like got it. There was like all these like, like in, and a lot of them, they like have color stuff like right, waiting for them. Like mm-hmm. color, it comes with like colored balloons and things like that. Anyway, I just like was laying there, like looking through these videos, boo, happy boo hooing about all these people seeing color for the first time. <laughs> and so I call my best friend because I think <laughs> she's my best friend <laughs> to tell her about this really magical corner of the internet. <laughs> And she goes, oh, yeah, the color glasses where, like, they get all emotional in the videos. Uh (laughs) And I'm like, listen, bitch. (laughs) And and bitch. I'm like, you knew about this? I'm like, and this is not the first time this has happened. Like, the other one that really comes to mind that was very recent was when I found that TikTok people live streaming and like bidding oyster like pearls that they had made in oysters that were like these happen to be in the shape of crosses and they're like fishing out these pearls and people are like bidding on them and I'm just like what is this and how is this a thing <laughs> call my so-called best friend and she's cool. like air oh quotes. yeah <laughs> air quotes fucking <laughs> and she's just like uh oh yeah the people who make like 
different shaped pearls. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, I've seen that. And I'm like, <laughs> listen, like what <laughs> friends are for sharing weird things that you find on the internet <laughs> with each other. And also I just, well, the other thing that I was roasting you about was I was like, is your threshold for like weird just so much like higher than mine? <laughs> But I don't register those things as weird. I don't know. Yeah. I, yeah. I just don't know. That's why so you like funny. casually drop in conversation. Like, so I was reading this book on past lives and I'm like, hold up. <laughs> Tell me about this book. Like it was like a salt, small, like side note. Sidebar. I know. It's so, it was so funny. And then you were like, you were like, are we even friends? Are we even best friends? What other weird, amazing things are you withholding from me? And it was like, I was yes. dying. I've been dying about it. And I've, I don't know the answer to any of these questions. I don't know why I don't register. Like, this is weird. I should share this. I don't know why I don't have like that. I do with funny things. Like, I'm like, this uh-huh. is funny. I'm People falling. This. People falling. That's, like, that's your favorite. That's like... <laughs> Favorite. It's funny how there's different kinds of senses of humor because, like, that's kind of funny to me, but it's so funny to you. Like the slapstick, like, like stuff. I don't yeah. know why. I don't know why it's so funny. Yeah, and so you'll like. I don't know. It, it's just. It's actually funny because when <laughs> when you do your meme stream where you like put all your memes out, uh-huh. I'm always like, huh? We have very different. We do. <laughs> we do. <laughs> like, there's some overlap. But we self deprecation. We overlap yeah, at self deprecation. <laughs> definitely. Yes. And it's just, I don't know. It's really funny. And that's like, actually, remember when you gave me that book? And I was like, so you gave me this book that was like a, fr- a friendship book, which, oh, by yeah. the way, I gave you a friendship book first, where it's like basically it like prompts. Uh-huh. It's like prompts, right? To get you to fill in like why you love each other from like different angles, right? Mm-hmm. So I give you one. It's like super tiny. It's probably like two inches by three inches. Very cute on your birthday. And then what was this for? My birthday? It was like a super late birthday present because I wanted to give it to yeah. you. Yeah. And then for my birthday, you found a book that was like 100% more amazing a lot and bigger, bigger and beautiful. Better. <laughs> I was like, all right. I didn't know this is a competition, but here we go. No, I'm just kidding. But I'm going through this book and I'm reading the answers to your prompts and I'm like, and I looked at you and I go, oh, you're funny. And you were like, thanks, bro. <laughs> like, you were like, are you for like, like, <laughs> like you're best like, are friends. <laughs> you were, you were just like, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, hilarious. I don't, I, I was like, I'm, I'm really sorry, but I just like, don't like, if I describe you like funny, isn't one of the things that you <laughs> just describe. <laughs> And you were just like, wow, thanks. And I I kept like going through this book and I was just like, oh, my friend is funny. And you were like, what the fuck? (laughs) It was making me laugh so hard. But I think it's because we like talk about like, like the stuff we talk about is usually, I don't know, like introspective. I don't know what it is. It's this. It's it's this. It's like everything we talk on the podcast is literally how we talk in life. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we forget to laugh, I think. To just be silly and goofy. It's That's why I do love like getting stoned with you because we're really good at being just like really ridiculously (laughs) goofy when we're stoned together. Because like we're just like... (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yes. and it's so funny. I just loved it. I'm so trying much. to remember. Oh, what, one of my favorite ones in that book was like, if you were an animal, you would be, and you were like a kangaroo. It was a sexy kangaroo. S- <laughs> oh, a sexy kangaroo, and I was just like, what the fuck? And you were like, because do you remember the rest of it? It was something I don't- like because you're you're nurturing. But yes. also you will punch somebody's lights out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. It was like the pouch slash cute. Yes. Yeah. And but you had to slap on sexy because like kangaroos aren't yeah. sexy, but also you will like fuck someone up. You will punch them in the face. You will and I was straight just, up like, punch somebody. Yeah. <laughs> it was so funny. I know. Uh, the, it's so funny because like my, my and I feel like we we talked about this in the episode where we were talking about flirting, like that it comes out that part of me especially comes out when it's like somebody that like, I don't know, I have that flirtatious energy with where I just mm-hmm. am like, 
it is like only jokes and I like revert to like some, like a 15 year old boy and I'm just like and just like picking on people yeah just roasting them constantly and I'm like I don't know if this like brand new friendship has like the the foundation to withstand my <laughs> quote-unquote flirting just like I don't know I love it but yeah I that I, that needs to come out more maybe I'll just like write more books to you <laughs> yes. No, it's it's the whole like situation is so funny. It's also such a testament to how you get into patterns with people. Like, yeah. You know, where you just like you tend to like show up uh, like show certain like parts of yourself, I think. That's true. But I don't feel, feel really like I don't show so I don't like there's nothing that I like don't express with you. Mm-hmm. Anyway, it's just um yeah. 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 And then we moved into my guilt. Go ahead. Sorry. No, I I was just like, I want to get better at like sharing weird. Now that I know that like, that's, that is like important to you. And I need to share this weird. I need to get better at doing that. And I'm going to practice. One of my favorite things. And I think it comes from a place of like, I had this core belief that I realized was so judgmental and like not kind. And we've talked about this before where I just like, I would judge people who didn't find, because for me, like some of my core values are like giving back, like helping people less fortunate. Mm -hmm. Like those are some of my core beliefs. And so anyone that I didn't perceive was doing that. Ooh, this is going to be a great segue. Um, I would judge the fuck out of them. Mm-hmm. I would be like, "What the way you're spending your life is like not helping the greater good. Like, how dare you? And I've come to realize that like, that's not a help. Like that, that's like not how I want to show up, nor mm-hmm. is it like, do I have any under, like, I just, it was so narrow minded. Right. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't mm-hmm. like seeing like the big picture. And also it wasn't leaving space for the fact that like, who the fuck am I? to know like what this person brings to the table and that that is more or less valuable than like what I deem valuable. Right. So this is like a belief I had in my early twenties that I realized was like so gross and it's like gone, but it's like definitely was a part of my story. And so I think when I see these things, like people like making cross pearls and like fishing them out, Mm. (laughs) It's like, I think one of the reasons I love it so much and it like tickles me so much is because I love finding corners of the like world that are so fucking different from Mm -hmm. how, where people are spending their time in ways that are so different than how I'm spending my time. Yeah. And like, that's like one of my favorite things about social media, honestly, is when you find that and you're like, what? This is a whole world. Right. Like a whole like micro world that right. I just like did not know existed. I love and I that. love that. Yeah. It like tickles my brain. <laughs> yeah. I like that. I like that perspective about it a lot. Cause I, I feel the same way. I really enjoy like, look at, it's just like, look at how big our like planet is and how many people are here and how like we all have our thing and that's mm-hmm. all important, you know? Um, mm-hmm. I love that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so I know I'm hesitating. You're hesitating about uh, the rant. Yeah. Um, Cause my, one of my guilty pleasures, we joke, I actually yesterday asked Ben, cause we were talking about vices and somebody asked me like, what is your, what are your vices? And I was like, that's interesting. Ben, what are my vices? Mm. And he was like, um, He's like, I don't know really that you have them. He was like, but you, but you joke that your your vice, or at least your guilty pleasure, is like ranting, like mm-hmm. yelling. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And so I had a nice little rant this weekend, um, and that's what I think we're gonna talk about. But I'm noticing. Listen, I'm noticing that I'm nervous to kind of get into it because I feel like it's so nuanced, um, yeah. and also I it really pushes up against a core belief of mine that I don't think that screaming on the internet is like a good use of my energy. And so I think mm-hmm. that's why I'm like, kind of like feeling like, Ugh. but I do yeah. think, I don't know what we wanted to talk about today is really important. So help. Yeah. There's this, well, <laughs> help me get there. <laughs> yeah. Let's first talk about that. Let's talk about the screaming on the internet thing. Cause we both had like the same, like right now we're going through some pretty charged like shit 
in our yeah. government, mm-hmm. in our country. Lots of people are very, very upset. Most specifically, the Roe v. Wade decision that's yes. just happened. And because this is going to come out a few weeks later. And w- right now, as we're recording, this happened it is like a full few days in- ago. Inflammatory. Yeah. Yes. And and I don't know. And we've we've spoke about like stuff like this before. That I think that there are people that they like that the they need to rage they need to share that they need to like and Mm -hmm. and that that's important for pendulating and shifting things it's important but Mm -hmm. both you and I kind of landed in this space of like there's so much noise out there like Mm -hmm. so much noise and you know just like not wanting to just add to the noise and what can Mm -hmm. and the question is is like what can we do instead of adding to the noise what mm-hmm. alternative for expressing the energy or the thoughts that we have about this thing. And those are like the questions that we were like kind of asking ourselves independently. And then when we were chatting about it, we, we were just like on the same page there. Cause like, I, I, I just am feeling that so much mm-hmm. of wanting to be wanting my energy to be more effective Yes. And less just noisy because at mm-hmm. the end of the I don't feel like anybody fucking cares what I post on Instagram. Like really, mm-hmm. you know, it just is like, mm-hmm. I know there is some influence and impact and thoughts that can be, but like at the end of the day, that isn't, I don't think and some people where are thought are thought leaders. Mm-hmm. Yes. And there are some people who are thought leaders in that way. And like, and I even, like you know, platform. I follow those people for like Absolutely. the information that they put out there. Like it's not. But for me personally, arguing, especially like are getting in arguments and like de- and like the comments and stuff, I've actually stopped like commenting and responding to comments. Even on like my Facebook and Instagram ads, I've just made the decision like this is not the best use of my energy. Mm-hmm. Not only that, but I don't really see it become being like an effective conversation. Has anyone like and I'm sure the answer is yes, but more often than not, I'm sure the answer is no. Like, has anyone really change their mind from an argument and a comment no, section I don't on think a it thing. happens like no <laughs> it, it does not happen unless like you're talking about like a scientific debate where you literally can corner somebody with your brain and like mm-hmm. show that prove to them that they're wrong it doesn't happen in an emotionally charged situation because the second you choose to argue a, one person is on the offense, the other person is on the defense, and there's no chance, not even a shred of a chance for there to be an effective conversation happening. It's like, like conversation, like com- like effective communication 101. Like yeah. that is not where change happens, in my opinion. There are, I'm sure, some people where this is like not the case, but this is not how I'm – also, this is not how I'm like impacting change. I went through this whole like thing. The book, The Second Mountain was like so mm-hmm. important for me in this where I where I came to the realization that I was largely like I was putting far too much weight in the online world and not doing enough in my local community um, and like giving back and being really involved in like giving back in my local community is something that's actually like a core part of my like story and upbringing. And so for me, I just like, that's to me, like what feels the most effective. And I feel like because there's such a heavy emphasis and like screaming online, we've lost, we've lost so much of that. Like I just Mm -hmm. think people's eyes and focus and attention are turned to like Instagram and Facebook and what everybody's like ranting about there And it's just distracting us from like literally the people like, you know, the, for me, like the homeless people that are like hurting right in front of my fucking eyes in my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And so I have made an effort to really like turn my focus away from the online space and into like my community. And that was where my like rage rant came this weekend because I was starting to think about, there was a whole, um, there was a whole like wave of people who moved to Austin, Texas, especially location independent entrepreneurs and business owners, especially women that I like follow on Instagram, follow online. And I remember when there was this big wave moving to Austin from like all over the parts of the US, like the, the two reasons people moved to Austin were for taxes, to save money on taxes. And to not be subjected subjected to like vaccine mandates. Now, it's and, and I remember like 
distinctly, I sat at a table at a mastermind event where there were, there were no joke, like 10 people and more than half of them had moved to Austin, Texas Mm -hmm. for this reason. And they were kind of like shaming me for living in California for one, like how much I was paying in taxes Mm -hmm. and also feeling like I was a puppet of like the government for because I was going to like live in a state where like there were vaccine mandates. And at the time, one, they actually like made me feel a little insecure and like Mm -hmm. unsure. But I also remember thinking like, I was like, I don't think like these vaccine mandates, I'm pretty sure they're going to be obsolete like within the year. I remember thinking that. And I was like, and you just like up and moved your business because of that? Like, I don't, I I don't know. And then the other thing is like the whole concept of like saving on taxes. And now with like all the Roe v. Wade and everything, I just like had this whole bubble this weekend of getting really angry at location independent entrepreneurs because it's becoming more of a thing. And I think that, and like the other thing I remember thinking as was like, you've never lived in the deep South, have you? And most of like a few of them were from, one was from Australia one was from the UK. Um, others were like from all over the States and stuff. And I was just like, it really brought me back to when I lived in Baton Rouge, Louisiana for three years. And I've also like hesitated to talk about this time. Cause I really like, I don't want to like bash Baton Rouge, but it was like the most miserable three years of my life in part, because I saw firsthand how Louisiana does not care for its people for its mm-hmm. poor people and that mm-hmm. it's like set up to just support like wealthy white people. And um, yeah, just like in this conversation, I was so like, I was confused and, and feeling like disoriented, but also like had this like, you know, intuition, whatever, like, I don't think the vaccine thing's going to matter anymore. Also like, I'm like, I don't really like want to get into like a debate about, but I'm vaccinated and like, I don't care, but I do kind of like, don't want the government to say like you can or cannot do something because I also have people in my family who have like some serious health conditions and like if they were forced to get vaccinated I actually think it would be problematic so I just think that like situations are more nuanced like Mm -hmm. fucking abortion right there's Mm -hmm. that's what's like problematic about what happened is there's so much nuance to situations and to have like a blanket ban or a blanket mandate forgets that and And so I was just so angry because I was thinking about especially the women I know who moved their business. And I just don't think that they have thought fully about the responsibility and what they're doing by moving their business to a place like Texas, which is like literally always at the bottom five of like states in everything for like public education, (laughs) caring for like people in poverty, support systems. Um, you know, just like caring for people who have less than like, it's like Mm -hmm. Texas is like, it's like the bottom of the list and to, and to move just to save some money on taxes when you're in the top 1% of the world. Like, that's so gross to me. And it just like, I was so like, I don't, because I really want to believe that some of this, especially like I have a thing for women. Cause I'm like, you live in Texas now. Like you are you are supporting a government that like doesn't care for women and minorities and you had a choice to do that. And I don't think that you thought it through and you kind of went with like the like collective because it's mm-hmm. like a thing. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. And I was just like so angry because I was like, that's like, you should be more responsible and thinking about like what you're supporting and like what to save some money on taxes when you're already like all, all the people I'm thinking about are millionaires. like. Mm -hmm. really and if you are living like in that state like I I really hope I really hope that those people are getting outside of their white bubble and seeing what it looks like because that was something that really like honestly crushed my soul living in Baton Rouge because I remember there was a day where I found out that Baton Rouge Louisiana is predominantly black It's like 70 something percent black and the only other city in the United States that has like more black people is, is Detroit. And I remember being like, wait a second, where are all the black people? Because if that is true, and I live in Baton Rouge, 
all I see are white people. And I started like looking and expanding my, like my view and like what I was seeing. And I, and then I like, it wasn't very hard to discover that they were literally segregated on a particular part of town, like physically segregated in like low income housing, basically like projects. And like, they were just like removed. Mm. And I was horrified. Like, gosh, ugh, my rage in living in Louisiana was like all consuming and so problematic for my like mental health, honestly. Mm. Um, and so for me, like that, that experience like really like taught me how easy it is to like be in a community within like, oh, like a regional ecosystem, i.e. your state and miss it and not see what's like actually happening. Anyway, I was just super upset this week. <laughs> and yeah, uh, yeah. I think, and I'm like turning and then Look, I'm turning red. I know. So, you um, are. So, uh, <laughs> you got I'm trying. I'm, it's actually because I'm like trying to like contain how like I'm trying to like remain calm, but internally I'm like so angry, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I feel like I don't, and I know we were like when we were chatting about this, it, there, there is like this this question of of it's this whole idea like what are you are you part of a solution are you part of an, an effective solution that's going to look different for every person right I, I feel uh-huh. like that there some people might be thought leaders on Instagram and really like doing that some people might be leading protests and and, and really tapping into that deep like mm-hmm. righteous anger you know mm-hmm. and but like. I get that the the idea of these very wealthy people do, do making moves that seem to only serve them really at the end mm. of the day and and the and then the question being like what what solution are you part of for like the bigger picture like what you know what is that what is that thing and I, I remember I kind of like I had I had a bubble like this a couple of years ago when I was kind of uh there were people that I know that were part of these, like, there's these like really elite business, like mastermind friend groups, usually. master friend groups. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Seems like they like party and, and they're all these like extremely oh. mm-hmm. wealthy people. It like they, you know, and, and I remember being just like hearing about these masterminds and just wondering like, okay, so you had a great time. You guys all did like acid or whatever. And like, well, this you... is a very particular group. I remember okay. when I know, well, the but group this you're when... talking about in particular, and we won't like call them out, but like the one you're talking about in particular, I remember hopping on a call to see if I was like a good fit for it. Cause it looked very cool. I liked the people that were attending it uh, or I thought I did. And then as we were talking about it, I was like, Oh God. And the so thing is, is, I've never been, all these people sound like really great and wonderful, but I remember the feeling it brought up in me and it's not, it, and it doesn't even really have to specifically do with uh, this group. It was just this idea of the people that have solved the money issue, right? Most yes. of us are like living in like some form of poverty or barely making ends meet and yes. squeezing by, right? Mm-hmm. Most people are there. And then there's some people that have solved the money problem. Mm-hmm. And the question is, is like, what solution can you be part of to help everybody else that is still stuck under this like crushing weight of like barely able to make it and or whatever like whatever that looks like and it just felt I felt really frustrated that it's just like you know vacation homes or like whatever and and then on on one hand it's like you did the work you earn the money, you get to do whatever the fuck you want to do with your life. That's fine. And if what that looks like is just being comfortable for the rest of your life, okay, own that. Right. I guess, Mm -hmm. but there is something in me that like, it makes me just feel like, is that the point to be comfortable or is the point to like, to solve, solve solutions for yourself in your life so you can get mm. to a place where you can actually be part of effective change for other people. Totally. Like that seems to me so rooted in like my values and my beliefs. And I, you know, and I, and I, I remember really tapping into this similar, like this rage that you're, you're experiencing around people like who have the like conversation come up with around like the bigger conversation around the responsibility. Cause I feel like, you know, with the like success of my business and everything, 
I mean, I've always felt this way, honestly. Um, but I feel like a profound responsibility to like, to give back like as much as I possibly can. And I know that's not the thing for everyone, but it's like when you support, when you, I don't know, for me, it's like this, like, it's not even, I'm not even trying to like criticize a group of people. For me, it's like actually pretty specific. It's like these female location independent entrepreneur and business owners, some of which I know have like make like 10 million in revenue and they like up and move to a like state that just like does not care for its people. And I've seen what that looks like firsthand. And I feel like there's a little bit of like them being naive and not realizing what they're like buying into. But again, the sense of like pride that comes among entrepreneurs of like having like figured it out and broken out of some like system. Cause that's another thing I see, especially like digital nomads in Bali. There was such a sense of like pride and sometimes almost arrogance. And like, I figured it out. I solved the money problem. I'm not a slave to a nine to five anymore. But then that was like, that was it. And it's like, okay, so now what do you do with that? Cause you're not, you're not in survival mode. And honestly, like even like, even like the people who are, in like my, what I would consider my world, which is like, I don't know, lo- location independent entrepreneurs who are like getting out of survival mode and one of, and ways that don't feel meaningful to me, like maybe like, uh, Amazon, like drop shipping or Amazon FBA or something like that. I, I, I notice I have a little bit of judgment towards like drop shipping or whatever, but I'm also like, you know, they're trying to solve that first pain point, which is mm-hmm. like paying their bills. So they're not consumed by like trying to just fucking like make ends meet. And that's okay, right? But then it's like when you solve that problem in your life, it's like what is next? Like we 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 have to like be a part of the solution. And I just don't think I think it's like problematic that there's a sense of pride among entrepreneurs, especially newer, younger entrepreneurs, and being the ones who have like figured it out and like now I'm going to save on my taxes and I'm going to move to a state that like won't tell me what to do. Like it just feels very like childish um, Mm -hmm. and almost like immature. And I don't like, I don't really want the government telling me what I can and cannot do like across the board. I don't agree with vaccine mandates, but like, I also don't, I feel like they're almost controlled in a different way. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, they don't want to be controlled by the government, but they're controlled by the fear of it all. And they're not- The to control backs them into like a corner. A corner, yes. And they think that the solution is like running from one place to another. Whereas like, again, this was like a whole season in my life. And the book, The Second Mountain was a big part of it. um, Where I realized that like running from place to place- it makes it really hard to be a part of the solution, which is why like Mm -hmm. when I see a homeless person, like in my community, which is like, there is a lot. (laughs) I, I, instead of being like, I try to use that as like a reminder to like do something about it. Not to be like, ugh, the homelessness is such a problem. I'm just going to fucking move to Austin or I'm going to move away from it. It's like, like, no, I'm going to like do something about it. I'm going to like, volunteer I'm gonna donate money I'm going to like you know ah uh, anyway god and, I and it's so complicated it. <laughs> it's like I think that's the th- the place to land though is like and I feel like what we've done is we've kind of just like acknowledged things that have like gotten us all kicked up and and but the place to land is what am I what am I doing because at the end of the day it's like this this stuff is gonna happen mm-hmm. we can speak about it we could talk about it and it's like, what, what can I, what, then I just do the thing. I do the thing for me, you know, and hopefully maybe lead by example, or I, I don't know. I really think that, that like, if we want to see change, like if we want things to change, it's not going to happen by like moving away from discomfort. Like it's mm-hmm. going to happen by leaning into That's discomfort and being part of a solution. And and I do think that that depending on like where 
you are and where you've landed and on the like scale of, of your income and like what what are the problems that you're dealing with is going to determine like what you're going to be able to give back because somebody who can barely pay their bills mm-hmm. th- th- like it's just totally. kind of, I feel like totally. there's like different like layers of responsibility almost or personal responsibility 100%. around that but um yeah I just I feel like it, it's yeah moving towards that yes it's what you said hit it on the head I think is like it's not like especially with like location independent entrepreneurs I think I'm getting hung up on that specific like group of people because I that is me like that's Mm -hmm. like and I've like spent my whole life (laughs) figuring out how to like make that work and it's and I just see how problematic it is that we're like we just run away we just run away And I think there needs to be a little bit more of like a call to action for people with that kind of responsibility. Like if you have a eight figure business, like you, you are not just like physically moving yourself. You're like, you have a huge impact when you move your business. And, um, I just don't think people are really thinking it through actually, because I actually think the idea of being a a, a location independent entrepreneur is relatively new, right? Like this is like a new Mm. thing that's only been made possible by the internet. Right. And so I think that's like, and so I think, I think that's why it feels important to talk about. And also why I keep trying to check myself and be like, trying to not be too judgmental because I just, I just don't think the conversations are really being had. Like I haven't heard this conversation being had. And I just feel like I literally like consume content from other location on independent entrepreneurs, you know? So it's not, it's just not a conversation I hear being had. And I think it, I think it needs to be discussed more and people who have like location independent businesses, like shouldn't be celebrated for like running away from problems and not pouring into their local community. Like, Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I don't know. It's just been like on my mind because I feel the responsibility that I have as a business owner as being like, I don't know. It's something that I like spend a lot of time thinking about. And I'm also trying to push back on like, okay, so you have your own ways of feeling like this is like the right way to do things. And therefore, like who am I'm not the one to tell people how it should look. And I also don't know what they're doing behind closed doors, you know, so I definitely have that Mm -hmm. constantly checking my thoughts. Um, But I just I don't know, I don't for me personally, ranting on social media, getting in arguments in the comments is so draining and so not a good use of my time. And I actually don't feel insecure about it anymore because I know I'm doing my part. Like I know I'm pouring into my local community. I know that I'm like taking this responsibility very seriously and doing what I can and open to hearing when people are like, hey, you could be doing more. I don't know. Anyway, that's my rant. (laughs) Yeah. I think, I think it's good. And I, and after I got off the phone with you when we were first like really digging into it the other day, I remember saying to you like... I think it's important to acknowledge when you get really fired up about something because it's telling you it's highlighting deep rooted values that you have inside of you. And, and so I, that's why I think it's like good for us to kind of like talk about this on the podcast to kind of show people like kind of how to workshop through that. Like when there is something that's really getting kicked up, you're feeling really fiery and passionate about it. It can easily be directed like into pure judgment or pure anger or, or ranting on the Facebook, whatever. But like when, when you can really dissect that, talk about it, dissect what, what, what that energy is and what it means to you, and then be able to figure out how you can implement that or how you are implementing that Mm -hmm. or what is really important to you. Mm -hmm. I, I think that, that then that energy turns into something really valuable. And I hope we've kind of been able to like show how to do that a little bit, how to take that feeling, dissect it, dig into it a little bit and land in like, it, this is really important to me. And I feel like this is part of like being uh, solution minded to like p- 
press into discomfort, to like really invest in your local community, to do things like that and not allow yourself to be controlled by aversions to mm-hmm. being controlled, which is such an interesting catch 22 that you highlighted. Dude, it's it like, it like blows my mind watching all of that where people are just so consumed, consumed by the fear of being controlled. That like, I'm like, I've never, nobody's ever checked my vaccine to like go in anywhere. But people on the, like that watch the news, like my family and stuff are like, oh my God, California is like so out of control. And I'm like, what (laughs) are you talking about? I think it's also like this thing. And this is actually one of the things that upsets me most about the like thing that just happened with the Roe v. Wade is that we're being divided and set against each other. And when you, when you do, like, when that happens, we're like two different countries now. Like, it's like happening. And that's like, this is just massively exacerbated that. And I just think that like, it's so much easier for the brain to like, look at the situation and be like, fuck you. You're like a horrible person because you are pro-life or whatever. You know what I mean? Instead of being like, it's so much more complicated than that. It always is. But like, we we have to like resist the urge of the brain to like put things in boxes so we can understand it and simplify it because it's just like not true. And I, I really believe in people and I believe in their ability to see the nuances, but I actually think that the way you see the nuances is by having examples in your life of friends or family who are different from you. And that's where I think the ranting is really harmful because people just unfollow someone that they disagree with and they follow more people they agree with. And then you're just feed is full of everybody you agree Listen, with. And it's like, this and then, is, yeah. And that's like, that's like so not helpful. Like, it's just like, that's not making anything better. What's making things better is when you have a real conversation with someone, a real human who has a difference in opinion from yours and you guys can have a respectful conversation and respectfully disagree and hear each other out because that's where you actually change someone's mind. Create empathy. You have compassionate conversation. You're more effective. 100%. My heart has just been kind of breaking, just like scrolling. I was like scrolling Facebook and all the, how I, I, there were so many people that I, I was friends with that in big, bold letters posted, if you are celebrating what happened today or whatever, like, fuck you and unfriend me right away. You know, like Mm -hmm. many people Mm -hmm. that was their response was this this deep, deep anger. And and it's so true. Like that is like a very base initial reaction. But when you kind of like, if you can just get a couple layer, if you can acknowledge your feelings, get a couple layers past that initial like aggressive response and, Mm -hmm. and tap into what you were talking about that like, the core desire is that we're wanting there to be more understanding. There's so, I I think that the main thing that's happening here is neither sides are understanding each other at all. Like there's zero, zero understanding about what's happening, but both sides are feeling exactly the same way. Like they're feeling exactly the same way. So there's actually a ton of room for empathy. Um, potentially if you can have like a compassionate conversation with somebody, but I agree we're being, we're being completely divided. And the only solution that I see is being able to extend that. Like, like I want to listen, I want to understand, you know? And I actually think that it goes another layer deeper. And I think there are a lot of people in this world and places of power that benefit from the division And I don't, and I'm just like, how do you guys not see? It's kind of like a distraction. It's a distraction Mm -hmm. from like, what's really important. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I've had like good friends say to me like, oh, you can't be like, don't be friends with that person or unfollow that person because they don't agree with like you on this particular subject. And I have made it a practice in the last like five years or so that like when I disagree with somebody uh, politically on Facebook, Instagram, I don't unfriend them. And I like when I see something where I'm like, wow, I do not fucking agree with that. I actually say to myself sometimes, I'm like, it's good for me to see other opinions. Like, it's okay. I don't have to fucking agree with everything I see. And also it's okay to protect your energy. And if protecting your energy means like not participating in it in online space, like I think that's okay too. Like my mental health 
was like in part in the trash when it was like in its worst, worst, darkest place because I was, I was just like consuming media, like mainstream news media. And I just like felt like such despair and hopelessness constantly. And I realized that if I want to actually be able to like do good things in this world, I have to manage my energy so that I can like be impactful on a day-to-day basis. And that's what I want to do. I don't want to lay in bed in the fetal position, like overwhelmed with the state of the world. Like what is that? What good was me being like that doing for anyone? Mm -hmm. Because that was me. Like Mm -hmm. that, that has happened in my life. It's not even like, everyone's going to have a different way of dealing with these things. It's like everyone's going to have a different way of dealing with them in different seasons of their life. If you're struggling to like pay your bills, you're not like, it's going to be real hard to have the energy to like, to fight. You know what I mean? Yeah. And if you're struggling with your mental health, like you got to get that. It's like, you got to like find the core issues in your life, get to a place where you're like mentally healthy And then you're going to be able to like be a warrior. I literally like, I love, I forget it was like a meme or something where it's like, I work out to like fight the patriarchy and like, (laughs) do you know what I'm talking about? I think so. Yeah. It was some like meme or something. I don't even remember. It was a while ago, but it like sticks in my head because sometimes when I'm working out, I'm like, I got, you got to stay like, you got to get like fit and healthy mentally, physically so you can fight. Like, at least that's how I like sometimes motivate myself. I'm like, I can't. I can't be effective and like in a pit of despair. And yes, maybe you have a day where you need to like wallow. Um, And that can be like an important part of the process. And rage is an important part of the process. Um, But ultimately it's not where I want to exist because I know it's not where I'm the most impactful. Yeah, I feel like that was like a really good way to kind of like encapsulate this. And like, and just like what we've been talking about or saying throughout things are like so nuanced and Mm -hmm. but I do but I do really think that like acknowledging acknowledging your feelings when you're really getting kicked up trying to find like the value or what that is speaking about things that are really important to you and acknowledging where where is it are where are you operating out of fear you know and and where is it that you can lean into like compassion it's so problematic when we we fall into this way of thinking like these people are monsters or these people Mm -hmm. are horrible people and those gross generalizations because just like you were saying having all of us poor people fighting against each other in like the grand scheme of like the billionaires having all of us poor people fighting against each other is really beneficial because like then we're going to be distracted and focused on and yelling at yelling at Susan on Facebook instead of actually like looking at the things that are (laughs) happening right in front of our faces 100 percent, it's how we stay small and it's how we stay like cogs in the machine that like the machine that like Bezos and Musk are like fucking bases and musk (laughs) operating like puppeteers literally it's how you stay small like uh, is this making you like bigger more effective more impactful or is this making keeping you small like that's like always like one of the best questions you can ask yourself and i have to call out that i'm feeling like real insecure and having this conversation and i think that that's um comes from a place in how hostile the like online world feels these days Mm. And I think that's maybe like important to call out because I know a lot of people feel scared of speaking their mind. Um, and I think that's really problematic too, honestly. It's mm-hmm. one of the reasons I love Africa Brooke. She's like one of my favorite people because she like really talks about like self-censorship and how people are feeling like they can't speak their truth because – it's just such a hostile, it feels like a hostile world that you're like speaking into. And that feels really scary. And I, I wish people felt less like that. And part of the way we get to hear more beautiful voices is by not attacking each other and making Mm -hmm. like a more like inclusive space for like a variety of thoughts. (laughs) Like, Mm -hmm. and also realizing that people aren't going to fit into like a red camp or a blue camp all the time like it's more nuanced than that I don't 
Yes, there's so much there. I mean, I feel like we we could talk about this for hours, but I do I do hope people kind of, I don't know, I hope we've kind of like offered like this is how we workshop shit. Like this is how me and Sarah workshop thoughts and ideas and work through and have conversations. I'm so grateful I have you, Sarah, to like have these kind of conversations and that we are mm. a safe place, even though we're going to put this podcast out into the world that doesn't feel very safe, but like mm-hmm. we are a safe place for each other. And, and, and that's important. And it's because we operate with compassion and love towards each other. And I, I want to strive to extend that, to extend mm. that feeling out, you know, as mm. much as I can for sure. But yeah, it just, it, yeah, it comes back to, you kind of have to bring it back in. Like, what am I operating from, you know? Um, like what's mm-hmm. getting kicked up in me and owning that? And mm-hmm. and how can I have more emotional sovereignty? <laughs> mm, I love that idea. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Well, I love you. I love yeah. that we have this space that we can Ex- just like explore. Explore thoughts. Yeah. yeah. And and that's okay. And it's okay to not like have that fucking answer and like mm-hmm. solid, like things that we're hanging our hat on all the time. Like we're this, this idea, what we talked about today is going to grow and develop and we're going to have yeah. more thoughts around it and it's going to shift and change because we're fucking human and that's okay. You know? Yeah. And yeah. That feels good. Yeah. And it is like, I'm glad you said that because like all those thoughts, I think that's where the insecurity comes from because they all still feel new to me mm-hmm. and we can and like the world kind of feels like a place where you're supposed to like have your have shit certainty. worked out yeah uh, your shit worked out before you like say anything and it's I actually don't think that's and that's mm-hmm. like not real not real <laughs> no unless you're talking about like science or things you can prove with numbers like it's not real it's all changing all the time <laughs> mm-hmm. and even yeah. science changes even science mm-hmm. backpedals that's true. So. yeah that's true yeah. I think it's more important to have or it's important to have more conversations where you're like, I don't know the answers and I don't know everything, but here's but this what is I, here's what I'm yeah. feeling today. So yeah. anyway, yes. I'm glad we did it. Mm-hmm. Even though I'm cringing a little inside. So okay, bye. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, bye. Thanks for tuning in. And if, yeah, yeah. No, I love you. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Okay, till next time. Yes, till next time. Love you. Bye.